Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the problems at the end of Chapter 7. Okay, these problems are, I think they will, if you give them a try, they're really going to teach you a lot about um, the techniques that um, was were developed in this chapter. The first one is concerned with this autonomous vector field in the plane. This is the type of nonlinear vector field that we've seen an awful lot. This is, there's a slight wrinkle in this one, nevertheless. Um, the parameter delta is we're going to take it greater than or equal to zero. You can easily get the stability of the um, of the fixed points using linearization. But what I want you to do is use Lyapunov's method to show that um, the equilibria, not the origin, but the two equilibria plus or minus one zero are Lyapunov stable for delta equals zero and asymptotically stable for delta greater than zero. So the obvious question is, what do I use for a Lyapunov function? I said I was going to come back to this. There's an appendix on it, but uh, I'm, I'm going to come back to it bit by bit. Um, yeah, that's the real question. So what do you use for a Lyapunov function? Um, well, you could try v of x and y, y squared over 2 minus x squared over 2. That doesn't quite work, x to the fourth over four. Um, look at the level sets of it. If you, but you won't, you're only interested in a neighborhood of the points plus one zero minus one zero. So if you were to tailor expand this about each of those points and use the as much of the Taylor expansion as you need. Remember that Lyapunov's theorem is a less than, so you can often get away with bounding um, with leading order terms and bounding the higher order terms because you're only interested in stability in a small neighborhood. It's, it's a bit different than um, than the Lasalle invariance principle in that sense. So anyway, uh, this this is a this is a uh, bit of a tricky one, but uh, and I think in some sense it's the trickiest one of all the problems in this in this problem set. All right, here's a problem you know, problem two. This is the first problem we did with uh, with uh, Lyapunov's method, and we were able to prove that the origin is asymptot sorry is Lyapunov stable, but not asymptotically stable, because we we we. Uh, uh, weren't able to prove strictly less than zero. All right, but if you use instead the Lasalle invariance principle, there's only one equilibrium point in this problem, you can conclude asymptotic stability. So you just set it up the usual way. You need to have this positive invariance set. And uh, what would you use for v of x and y? I would try... Uh, one half x squared, one half times the quantity x squared plus y squared. The same Lyapunov function that we used in arguing about Lyapunov's um, um, Lyapunov stability for this. This is a really nice problem. All right, you've seen this one before, but now you have a little different term. I want you to use the Lasalle invariance principle to describe the fate of all trajectories as t goes to infinity. You can use the same uh, v of xy that we used in for the, uh, a similar example in the, the chapter and for for getting the, uh, the peanut-shaped um, positive invariant set. Um, and this gives you an idea about the, um, the power of the Lasalle invariance principle. I think we've seen it already, but um, mind the sign.
Now this is a problem that's not really about Lasalle invariance or Lyapunov. You can play with that in these problems if you want to. But this is, we haven't seen it. Uh, again, you know, we have, we have this kind of basic form and then we add different things to it. And this is something, a form that we haven't seen before. So I just want you to uh, determine all the equilibria and their linearized stability as a function of alpha. Now, um, you know how to do that because you can compute the eigenvalues and it's all um, in general for this problem. And uh, it's just a matter of, uh, of looking at the structure of the eigenvalues, the sign of the real part, whether they have imaginary parts or not. And so that's fairly straightforward, little tedious. Now this is a fun problem because uh, you can learn an awful lot from this. You have this linear vector field with the parameters a, b, c, and d, a, b, c, d that are real and arbitrary. And I want you to um, give conditions for which a, b, and on a, b, c, and d for which the vector field has no periodic orbits. And we kind of did this for that particular problem early on. Give conditions on A, B, C, and D for which all of the orbits are periodic. Okay. Using this as a Lyapunov function. Give conditions on A, B, C, and D for which the origin is asymptotically stable. And finally, give conditions on A, B, C, and D for which X equals zero is a stable manifold of the origin and y equals zero is the unstable manifold of the origin. So this problem will make you um, look at everything we've done up to this point. So it's a good problem. Problem six is interesting. Um, so here's the here's the, the vector field. I want you to deter determine linearized stability of the origin. Origin is a fixed point. That's pretty obvious. And then I want you to describe the invariant manifold structure for the linearization about the origin. Find the uh, stable, unstable, center, subspaces, whichever exists or do not exist. Using this as a Lyapunov function, the what can you conclude about stability of the origin? And does this agree with linearized stability results that you obtained above? Why or why not? And then I want you to use finish this off by using the Lasalle invariance principle. Determine the fate of the trajectory starting at an arbitrary initial condition as t goes to infinity. And what does this result? enable you to conclude about stability of the origin. And that is not unrelated to this problem here. Okay, lots of fun problems at the end of this chapter. I hope you enjoy them, and I believe you're going to get a lot out of them. So next time, we're going to start bifurcation theory. And I'll explain what that means in Chapter 8 and Chapter 9. So until next time, goodbye.